Hello, everyone. Welcome to, well, it's not the last uh, streaming session of Indie X 2022, but it's actually my last streaming session. Uh, they all say that good things, all good things must come to an end. And I believe it's a, a perfect way to go with a bang with a really uh, awesome game uh, that I love since the, the first moment I played it. It's the season of The Warlock by the studio Encomplot. Encomplot. And with me, uh, I have the pleasure of having uh, Javier Cadenas. How are you, Javier? Very fine. Thanks for having us in this uh, great event. Oh, thank you. For us, it, it's actually our pleasure because, um, you know, we uh, during this event, we've been uh, actually telling some things we when we were choosing the games that we talk among each other. And I remember having João calling me uh, when he he just played the season of the Warlock build, and it was like someone just made a game with the Vincent Price. So, <laughs> yeah, whoa, are you fans <laughs> of Vincent Price and the old school and classical horror movies and actors? Yeah, exactly. That's why uh, the main character is a kind of a resemblance of Vincent Price because the the game is actually inspired by a especially in the uh, Edgar Allan Poe uh, cycle of adaptations uh, by Roger Corman, mm -hmm. uh, a, a series of films uh, from the 70s. So it's, uh, it's one of the main inspirations of the, of the game. And he got such a great presence. Uh, he was a great actor, all the kind of movies he usually did. Uh, if you've been watching some of our streams, I, I well, it's more than public that personally I love uh, pun and click, um, pun and click games. Even our website that we've been writing for the last eleven years, it's called Monkey Island, uh, Rubber Chicken, because of Monkey Island, mm -hmm. and it's good to see that indie developers are breaking all the um, the expectations and uh, reliving and rethinking how uh, adventure games can be done contemporarily. Are you all fans of point and click and you decided let's be brave and do the, the genre we love? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've been playing uh, adventure games since, uh, since we were children. Uh, in fact, uh, we used to have a website on adventure games. Uh, we've been writing about them for almost 15 years in, in Spanish. And uh, yeah, one day we decided, okay, let's uh, let's do our uh, adventure game. It's time after years and years of criticizing games made by others to uh, try our luck on making one. Is this your first game? It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't show because I know that people watching this live stream already uh, watched the trailer. And we are now uh, afterwards going to play the game, but um, it's so cohesive, so polished that it, I think nobody would look at it and say, "Yeah, it's their first game." Well, thanks. Uh, we're <laughs> trying so hard, and uh, we're just a, a team of two people, so uh, oh. that's uh, good to hear because that means we've at least been uh, successful in delivering uh, something that looks. Uh, polished enough uh, that means we have that's uh, a difficult feat for us now we've been trying to put everything we have in the in the game and hopefully it pays did you find it difficult during this process to approach investors or publishers and pitch them uh, point and click adventure we did yeah I mean um, We've been approached by uh, several publishers, um, but I'm not so sure about the deals they they tend to offer. Uh, I know uh, selling adventure games uh, is a difficult task, mm -hmm. um, especially if you don't know the uh, the market for adventure games because it's a very special niche, um, and a lot of publishers uh, I've approached. Uh, they told me, well, I don't really know how to market a game such as such as this one. No, they uh, some of them feel uh, it's uh, 
something hard to sell, as I said. No? And the, the ones that did, um, that did think that they, they could handle it, the, the deals they offered were not something we felt we should be signing, no? because um, getting funding is so hard. And so far, the game is totally self-funded. We've been mm. doing it uh, from our own money. Um, so the risk so far is ours. And yeah. the, the risk most publishers wanted to um, take in was not uh, that uh, high. You know? So uh, they usually are quite um, they try to preserve their uh, their risk, you know, and and that means a lot of risk for us because we are putting, as I said, pretty much everything we've got in in the game. So so far, that's been the case with with the publishers we've been talking with. But I don't know, maybe that changes in the future. In any case, yeah. uh, our plans so far are uh, self publishing uh, at least for pc uh, unless we um, presented we presented with a a deal we are fond of no so uh. Javier, do you think do you feel this uh, you were talking about the fact that selling adventure games is a niche do you feel mm -hmm. this niche is um centered in in europe european consumers like us mm -hmm. i I think most because when you imagine, yeah. for example, example Germany, Germany is a, a good market for point and click adventures. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Germany is probably the biggest one. Uh, yeah. I think that's probably one of the reasons uh, a adventure games uh, fell in popularity because uh, the U.S. market is uh, not that strong with adventure games currently, yeah. and as you know, well, a, a lot of people are. Uh, really focused in the in the u.s market and most of the press comes from the mm -hmm. uh, u.s or uh, english-speaking territories uh, and that means if they're not interested then we uh, don't get enough coverage if we don't get enough coverage uh, then the the sales tend to be poorer no but uh, yeah i think europe is a strong market for adventure games definitely and it's kind of ironic i already uh, talked about this with the developers of lost in play because this is the year where uh, Monkey Island, probably one of the biggest uh, point-and-click adventure franchises ever, made its um, return. And I believe it's globally commercially successful. And of course, it's already an established, um, an established brand and franchise. But don't you think that that success might be a good, uh, a, a good argument for you uh, while pitching to publishers like see there there is a market for this if this is well mm. um well communicated well hopefully but uh, i do think that monkey island just transcends the the adventure game niche i mean most mm -hmm. people uh buying monkey island are buying a monkey island not yeah. an adventure game so uh that that's something different for the rest of us the the rest mm -hmm. of us as they are just regular adventure games but monkey island has a brand on its own which transcends yeah. the the genre itself so and you uh, both of you are in spain aren't you we both are mm -hmm. yeah uh and since what i've been feeling from the last few years that your community is pretty uh energetic and you have some programs that uh, work cohesively with the developers like playstation with with alliances or game camps and talents, mm -hmm. uh, did you feel uh, there was uh, some openness um, on that on that side, even from the community or established brands, be it Ubisoft, maybe I don't know, or the publishers that that actually uh, have offices in 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 Spain? Well, the, the bigger publishers, I don't think. Um are that interested in in adventure games uh, i'm not sure about the indie programs of the of the console uh, manufacturers i'm mm -hmm. not sure about that uh, but well you know uh, adventure games are usually difficult for consoles uh, we're actually trying to have a, a 
a bad prototype, uh, a bad controlled prototype. In fact, we we want to, uh, and it's already announced, we, we want to release the game both with point and click controls, but also with direct controls. Uh, and we've already have a working prototype, but um, we need that first in order to try to showcase it to, uh, to console publishers, uh, because I don't really like a lot the way um, you used to control adventure point and click adventure games in in consoles. I don't yeah know, uh, using it's the natural mouse uh, cursor uh, with mm -hmm. the analog stick is natural. It's imprecise, mm -hmm. uh, and I I feel it's uh, harder to play these these games with with a pad. So what we're doing is just uh, introducing direct control to the character uh, with uh, with one stick. Uh, and and when you uh, move around uh, hotspots areas, uh, we highlight some hotspots, not all of them, because I I'm not really fond of the hotspot uh, highlighter for the mm -hmm. whole uh, scenario. And then you can cycle uh, with one button and and interact with the highlighted uh, hotspot. No, that's what we're trying so far. Uh, if we get uh, if we get it working properly. I, I think that's a, a good starting point to start showcasing the, the demo to the to console publishers and maybe uh, they feel interested in in the game. And, Let's see. And uh, let me ask uh, the director: Can you can you please now full screen uh, the game because I need to pick up some no, without our with, without our my camera at least please I need to pick up something. You you'll know why. Just give me one second, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, back. I don't want to be alone, so I brought my Edgar Allan Poe um, <laughs> figure to be with me, because um, yeah, even with his raven here, that's why I think it's the it's the perfect companion for this uh, streaming session. Yeah, uh, perfect fit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I I think I can sit him. He'll be here. Okay, stay there. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive into. Uh, the Season of the Warlock, an amazing and original point-and-click game from two developers in Spain. Wh wh what city are you based on, Javier? In Madrid. Oh, you're in Madrid. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we're in Groldavia. Everyone that is a fan of uh, no, someone. I'm not going to grab a Celine Dion CD. Um, that's not. It's not a Celine Dion poster, guys. Oh God, it's not a controller. It's actually Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, whoever is a fan of. Um, oh, I just did something. Sorry, maybe the sound is too is too low because I I lowered it. Whoever is a fan of classical horror movies instantly is noticing the great great like likeness of uh, vincent price maybe one of the best or the best uh horror uh, actor of all time maybe second to christopher lee yeah christopher mm -hmm. lee was one of the great ones too yeah the speed of your... <sighs> are you aiming this game to our generation I, I'm, I'm saying I, my gener uh, our generation because I assume you might be 30 something close to 40 or 40 plus exactly yeah that okay. is something close to 40 <laughs> yeah I'm, uh, not necessarily I mean uh, I think it's uh, it has an obvious appeal to our uh, generation and the older generations too uh, but we hope uh, we uh, um, give enough uh, for younger generations to appreciate both the game and the kind of ambience uh, it mm -hmm. it's now because uh, we love gothic horror uh, we love uh, this idea of horror as something atmospheric and uh, not just uh, scare jumps and uh, uh, being really frightened but a particular atmosphere um which is basically what what the uh, uh, roger Coleman or vincent price or uh, christopher lee movies uh, did back in the day you know uh, they weren't actually scary movies it was just 
everything about the atmosphere you know? and that's the atmosphere the same atmosphere we try to convey with the game that's why uh, everything uh, is so uh, bright in colors you know? and uh, the kind kind of uh, with a lot of attrezzo, which is uh, what so they use in, in the movies. The but we have a lot of um, hey. uh, close, uh, close cuts of uh, characters or or the the, um, the paintings, as as we saw in the movies. So it's just everything is about ambience and atmosphere. Yeah, even and, like the the classical Universal monsters, uh, no yeah. jump scares in the way they did. Um, uh, horror, wasn't it? It's more like the thrill of the 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 rhythm and the actual ambience, wasn't it? Exactly, no. And the the storylines, uh, which are uh, not necessarily that dark, but with a lot of particular emotions. No? Uh, we try to convey that too with the with the soundtrack, which uh, we're fortunate to have. Uh, an orchestral soundtrack uh, with, uh, recorded live, no, and, and I think that shows a lot in the in the game, and that's uh, a lot to the ambience too. You were saying it's just you, uh, Javier, and what's the name of your your team member, your your colleague? He's he's called Paco, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're yeah, we're both both of us, uh, as well as a musician who's not. Uh, uh, making a the development of the game but uh, without him we couldn't have the original soundtrack we have so let me just tell you if you if you've been noticing uh javier and what are you the programmer or the artist or what are you developing in the game javier? Mm -hmm. well i'm what, what, the, i'm a uh, co-designer and i'm the programmer the, okay. the, the pr person the, um, the producer i do Many things we both do many things because uh, there's just uh, so much to do uh, when making a game, and being only two, we have a lot of hats. So, so th there's something I immediately identified that you are personally uh, 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 point and click buff because you just did, did something that all of us complained when we were kids or teenagers when playing this. If you've noticed, if you double click, the character will, uh, he, he will not accelerate, but he will almost teleport to the place so that we don't have to bother. Because we all, we all hated watching the animations, like you have to go from this side to the screen to this side of the screen. And I think 30 or 40 percent of playing a point and click game was just watching the character move all around. And you, you change that, so you, you, you don't want to artificially uh, feed us um, uh, longevity that it doesn't have. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we we try to uh, uh, go as straight to the puzzles as uh, as we can. We are here to play. After all, we uh, don't really like waiting time, so we do have the a quick movement option. If you double click on the on the ground far enough from the character, it kind of gets, uh, kind of teleports, as you say. We also have double click uh, on exits so that you can go and directly to the to the different room. And after the the demo in the longer part of, of the game, once uh, you uh, make uh, the choice at the end of the demo, uh, we activate a, a map of the region uh, you can use to directly go anywhere with just two clicks instead of uh, just running around. Uh, backgrounds uh, just for the sake of uh, see how they how they look no you can go directly anywhere in the in the game did you uh, the other thing that all of us hated when we were playing the classical point and click games was uh, pixel hunting mm -hmm. um, are you implementing or is it implemented or are you thinking of implementing in the future um, like a, a, a key that will allow you to highlight everything that is uh, that has interface in the, on the screen well no i i know this is controversial but mm -hmm. i don't uh, really like this kind of solutions to me okay pixel hunting is in fact uh, something i i hate but i do think it needs to be fixed by design and not uh, with a 
a patch uh, which is what I feel the hotspot highlighter is. Uh, we try to put not only big hotspots but items you can actually see because the game uh, requires observation or it should require observation but um, it's not a hidden objects game so mm -hmm. items are not actually hidden around. No, I think they are all uh, properly seeable uh, and you wouldn't get lost naturally in the game because you don't see items because we are trying to put a lot of care in uh, where do we put items, no? So that there's no need of this uh, hotspot highlighter. And I don't think that's a good solution in any case, no? Because, they are, um, as I say, these games require observation. Yeah. If you don't... Um, you have a hotspot highlighter a lot of a lot of people just uses it and, and doesn't pay enough attention to their game context and and when they need to use an item that they need to pick up in one place in a different place they wouldn't remember what the item was because uh, they were using the uh, hotspot highlighter so they uh, didn't actually pay attention enough to keep that item in memory because it's not them who uh, actually searched uh, actively searched for the item no? that's that's my reasoning behind that and of course we can be wrong uh, that um... it's your decision i think mm -hmm. it's your vision for the game so you're going into a more um book of unwritten tales kind of approach isn't it mm -hmm. uh, hopefully i mean um what we're trying exactly is that, no? that that all the items you can see them properly that there's nothing hidden around that there's uh nothing. I, i'm not sure if uh, the book of unwritten days have the um, an integrated solution for that uh no yeah it just uh, find out by yourself so find yeah. the, the interactions exactly i thought the the book of unwritten tales did have one hotspot highlighter but I just don't yeah, I think because I don't usually use it. So <laughs> I, I can't remember if it's this. Maybe the second one already had it. I I've, I uh -huh. think the first one. I, I might be wrong. Uh, I think the second one might not have a highlight system. Mm -hmm. Kambi is saying and uh, uh, is agreeing with you, uh, saying that highlighting the items we need makes our attention lazy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I shortcuts the 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 actual um the play side of the the game yeah i think um it just breaks uh the uh, the player's train of thought no i, I thank you I Kami. in some in some way he seems to have it's a good one. uh you how far away are you from uh, releasing the season of the warlock how's your roadmap in this moment well that's a good question we're not we're not sure uh and in the past when we um tried to set a date we uh, failed miserably because as i said we're just two and uh making a game is uh quite difficult and uh making calculations on a date is more uh, difficult uh, even not. so uh, we hope to be finish it, uh, finishing it uh, around the the end of the year or early next year, and we will try to release it next year if there's a proper window of opportunity. Um, and we're close to finishing with the game. Uh, it's a quite uh, advanced already in terms of development. Uh, we're uh, given the Finishing touches, we'll polishing it and making internal QA. Um, we've got a version of the game which is almost uh, playable to the end, um, except from uh, some cutscenes and, and details. No? Uh, so, hopefully, uh, we are finally releasing it next year. But I can't be sure, so it's just do you, a desire. Do you feel? For, I, I was checking here. Um, 
Are you thinking of uh, adding? Uh, I'm now opening the inter the the inventory with my I uh, mm -hmm. key. Are you thinking of implementing like going to one to the bottom of the screen and uh, it pops yes. up? Yes. So... In, in fact, we we will have options for that in the um, mm -hmm. in the options menu so that you can set uh, the uh, inventory to work as you want. But uh, uh, you can use also uh, which is the default method we we want to use the mouse uh, the mouse wheel if you uh, oh you yeah yeah thank you thank exactly. you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome you know there's something I, I i i think you're not the first point and click uh game i was able to to have these sessions and conversations in, in the the last few years of indie x even when it was a physical edition that will return hopefully next year. And th there's something I've been noticing since uh, both me and you as a creator, we probably played the same games when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. I, I, The majority of times, I feel like I'm reading the Matrix when I play contemporary point-and-click games. Because I, I, I immediately identify with your train of thought, because we have the same references, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, like you, you look at the puzzles, and although you have to search, I, I think I know your way of thinking because we mm -hmm. have the same the same uh, references that we played the same games probably. Mm. Versatile enough, I'm not hungry. And you're aiming for um, Steam for sure. Are you aiming for uh, consoles too? We hope we can. Yeah, um, our engine, which is Vision Studio, oh. yeah, the same engine they daily use. Uh, in most of their adventure games, mm -hmm. such as Eponia, for example, is probably the most famous. Do you uh, them, by the way? It, it exports natively to all the consoles. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, we hope we can release on consoles too. Uh, we're now in the process of um, um, signing up in the uh, uh, developer portal for the, for the different uh, console platforms. And uh, we want to release it uh, for Switch, that's uh, for sure, and we will try to do it uh, simultaneously with PC, and then we'll, we'll need to look in uh, at the at the other console platforms. But yeah, definitely, uh, we want to release the games the game both in for PC and consoles. It's not announced uh, yet because we need to do a lot of testing, no? but uh, that's definitely our intention. We have Sir Beck is asking what references are those? I don't know if you do you want to give some examples of your favorite point and click games when you were growing up? To yeah, see if we uh, can I, <laughs> I could probably uh, say different games every time uh, you ask me that question but go, uh, go. <laughs> uh, of course mo most of the most of the like I said, it's classics that's for sure my favorite one is probably the day of the tentacle it's uh, my favorite I, game of all time <laughs> <laughs> and i i do like a lot the uh, uh, most of the sierra classics too for sure uh, and gabriel knight especially uh, and uh, i love Unstruck, I love uh, the stranger ones such as uh, Sanitarium. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I love uh, the old ones by Legend of Infocom. Uh, I love uh, the Tex Multi series. I mean, uh, the, the, there's a lot of games I, I I like in the adventure game field. Uh, Did you like even... the Westwood ones like um, Kirandia? Especially the second one, not not that yeah. much the first one, but I really loved uh, Blade Runner, even if it's a hybrid adventure game. I think it's a brilliant one, and I do like modern point and click games such as the the Wadjet Eye games or uh, uh, the adventure games by the tale before they started making interactive uh, dramas uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite uh, adventure games of the last uh, years is uh, which is already old it's uh, uh, some of Max the Devil's Playhouse uh, which I think it's brilliant uh, 
I was recently playing um, the uh, it was called Encantamento First, and, and now it, it changed the, the name. Uh, it's called Hobbs Barrow, the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. I, I, I couldn't remember. And I uh, I loved it. I, I helped a friend of mine uh, with the development of Nightmare Frames, which is another great uh, point and click adventure, a horror one. Uh, yeah, released the the last year i i do play the, a lot of adventure games and i i can name quite the quite a few both, recent ones uh, did you play dark side detective both one and, and the first and the second yeah in fact i did translate to spanish the first one uh, uh for for the developers and really uh, yeah <laughs> so you met um at trasa and uh dave uh, we didn't meet in person because we oh. uh, I, I I couldn't be at the Adventure X uh, edition. They were there, or uh, I, we couldn't meet there, or whatever. No, but yeah, I, uh, we talked a lot during the translation process uh, through their uh, through chat. No, and through the they are great. You know, they 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 developed part of the first Dark Side Detective living in Portugal because they were doing this uh, like tour, like they were living abroad two or three months in a, in a country or more and then they would go to another country mm -hmm. to, um, to to actually get to know other countries and and at the same time keep on working on their game because yeah they, they both could do that um, with their laptops mm -hmm. and they they were finalists of our second edition uh, with the physical edition and they they came here and one year later they came here on vacations and we spent time together we had dinner uh, we had dinner, yes, and then we came to drink some, some, some wine here at home where I am. And they are really, really cool people, and they are really passionate about adventure games. It's always yeah. always good to find people that love the the genre. I did met Paul uh, uh, back in the day at the Adventure Treff party, which is a an annual party that people from uh, from Adventure Treff, which is the uh, one of the German adventure gaming communities uh, yeah. organizes uh, during the Gamescom, and and we shared the table. Uh, he was showing uh, Taxi Detective Two, I think, or, or or the that's when I cannot remember. That's uh, some time ago, and I was showing uh, the season of the Warlock. And we we had fun. It's a it's a nice place to be if you like adventure games because a lot of uh, important developers. Uh, Usually go to the to the party and you can hang out with them and it's uh, fun. There was someone uh, Sessions was asking in our chat when is uh, the warlock waking up from slumber? <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, hopefully next year. Uh, but their message in Steam is uh, gonna disappear soon because Steam just changed the way uh, they. Uh, show dates so uh, mm -hmm. now it's gonna just be coming soon and That's yeah hopefully problem. next year and um yeah next year but it's quite an adventure did paco already release a game before uh, the season of the warlock or is it its first game too yeah it's his first game too and he's uh, uh not only the co-designer and co-writer uh in fact he's the main creative force behind the game uh, but he's also the responsible uh, of the of the visuals uh, everything you can see is done by him so this is really funny uh trying to um, uh think of what you are doing in a point and click game and at the same time having a conversation like i'm uh, <laughs> walking around trying to find water where to put the um, the creature on uh but alistair doesn't close his eyes for me to wash the to rinse the <laughs> the shampooed vermin yeah God. There's, there's, a, there's a way you can make him close the eyes but uh because you've been talking with me uh 
you probably missed some clues, which yeah, is one yeah, of yeah. Well, one of the reasons uh, showing adventure games in exhibitions is uh, usually so hard uh, because you need to be quite immersed in the game and pay a lot yeah. of attention. And uh, uh, by having a divided attention, uh, you tend to miss a lot of the a lot of the clues. Uh, so. Yeah, and I, I, you, I was saying that maybe adventure games might be missing the points to some audience that usually prefers something more direct, that you can be dividing your attention between other things, maybe more dynamic games or more action-based games, mm -hmm. where you don't have to, where things are mostly... Um, reflexes or muscular reflexes so uh yeah point and clicks are not that kind of those that kind of games hmm. yeah i mean you you cannot uh, divide your attention when playing adventure games uh, if you want to uh properly understand what's what's going on that's a handicap of adventure games for sure uh, because uh you need to play them with the proper state of mind um, and that's probably why they're not uh, games for a majority of people now and it's it's part of their interest but it's also one of the reasons they're so niche i think i i wouldn't say it's it's a problem of adventure games i think it's um the way we act now that we constantly need to multitask uh, and we almost feel like we're missing something if we can't do two things at the same time. But adventure games actually require you to require your undivided attention to to work. Mm -hmm. So, found my... Find... Uh -oh. yeah. I, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't usually like to ask because um, eventually people like to calculate the ratio between ours and their uh, financial investment. Uh, but I think it's a, a good way of uh, thinking how uh, how dense the game might be. Uh, do you have a, an estimate of uh, how many hours of uh, story can we play in Season of the War Warlock as the way you've written it now? We are not uh, sure and it's hard to calculate because obviously uh, the game doesn't on... take exactly the same time uh, depending on the on the player, no. Uh, but uh, there's a feature of the game uh, which is that it's actually kind of two games in one because at the end of the demo you need to make a choice, and depending on the choice you make, uh, the game changes completely. All the puzzles are completely different. Uh, it takes place in the same uh, in the same backgrounds with the same characters. Uh, it it has a kind of an overarching uh, story, but uh, the goals of the two of the two branches are completely different. And as as, as I said, a hundred percent of the of the puzzles are different from one branch to the other. So it adds um, at least. A, a one time replayability value um, because you can finish the game on one branch, see what happens, and then the game um, will offer you the possibility to go back to the choice and uh, uh, see what happens in the other branch. So it's another uh, reason uh, that we can't actually make uh, easier calculations of. Mm -hmm. of, of hours of playtime but probably between 8 to 12 hours uh, maybe more it depends a lot on on each player but you you're you're uh, staying away from the 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 westwood road where you could have a game over um, game over way are you going to have a wrong uh, like, can can you lose the game like in some old point and click games uh, no used to have. You, you can't uh, okay you and you can't uh, uh we try to uh, 
Be careful. It never really worked, didn't it, Javier? The idea of losing in a point and click game. D didn't you feel it when you played those games? Like, ba ba I didn't think you didn't... feel? Uh -huh. Didn't you feel that when when you you lost in Kirandia, for example, that it was strange to lose in a point and click game? Yeah, I mean, I I'm not sure if it's strange. In some adventure games, uh, the that the deaths are quite fun if handled properly, you know. But uh, yeah, I don't think it it's uh, suitable with the game rhythm and the uh, and the way uh, you can play these games, which is they're slow paced, uh, uh, low stress games, you know? and uh, I think. Uh, it's better to to try to avoid deaths unless you're doing something expressive with with deaths, no? which is not usually the case with with all the adventure games in, in which you could die freely. Uh, in many cases, in a quite unfair way. No? We have Rui asking something that we we talked about a few minutes ago. How how do you mitigate pixel hunting in this game? But the fact is that you're you're assuming the actual pixel hunting, are you? The kind of no, pixel hunting. Uh, we do not like pixel hunting, uh, and we try to avoid it as much as possible by not making really small items or really small hotspots. Uh, I think yeah. uh, our approach to avoid pixel hunting, which I think it's a big uh, issue with these games uh, is to uh, make proper uh, game space design no? and putting the items in clear places and making the characters in, in some cases point uh, to the objects and uh, trying to be clear with uh, lining and with the position of the objects so that everything is in in a place that you can actually uh see easily and that it picks your attention there's something that has been uh, happening uh in i think the last decade in terms of point and click uh, games and in this moment since i am kind of distracted i would need are you thinking of implementing this tip system uh, mm -hmm. to be to help when people are stuck we're making experiments with the integrated contextual hint system um, mm -hmm. in the way that HTL did with uh, their summon maxes, in which if you uh, spend too much time without actually realizing what's going on, uh, the characters would start talking to themselves or between yeah. between them no? uh, to uh, introduce subtle clues. But we don't like uh, strenuous uh, hint systems uh, with uh, uh, pop-up windows or uh, something quite guided because we think that's uh, in detriment of the of the fun of these games. Uh, and we try to signpost everything properly, uh, especially if you uh, can pay attention to the to the clues. If you uh, want me to give you an advice uh yes you should you should you, you've seen if you open the inventory there's yes. a uh, when you uh, go hover you on, the, on the items yeah and you can examine if you examine the towel it will give you a cool there it looks like the shampoo is... after rinsing not only will he be clean he'll... Okay. The master usually asks me to put one on his face while he bathes. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. that's just it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because I tried to interact the towel with the bathtub, but not with Alistair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Something funny. You mentioned Summon Max. Do you, do you believe that? I think it was the only classical point-and-click game that I really couldn't uh, enjoy as much as when I was younger because it was so surrealistic. Like, th the train of thought of um, Summon Max was completely off. I was... Why? Why, why <laughs> the solution for this puzzle is this? 
it made yeah, no it, sense. It, it probably was a bit too far fetching with some with some solutions. Yeah. I rather the uh, the tell some maxes, especially the third one. Uh, the first one is a bit too hermetic in design. Everything uh, is presented in. Uh, in the same room, you need to solve everything on, uh, oh, sorry, in. Um, but the second season was already much more uh, open and uh, wide. And the third one, uh, it's an incredible game. I, I love it. It's uh, it's not only fun, uh, but it's uh, it's got a lot of new ideas or old ideas treated in a different way um, every chapter changes uh, uh, it's got a lot of different stories to tell uh, within the same uh, story arc the character development is is really good yeah i love that that game um, and i much rather the devil's playhouse to hit the road do you, uh, I can't remember which one it is from the new ones. Which the one of the summon maxes starts with um, there's a, a giant robot outside his, their office and then they have to go to Santa Claus's house. That's uh, uh, the second season, uh, the first uh, episode, which is called okay. uh, I Station Santa. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. That's, that's fine too, yeah. Well, our, our time just flew by. Uh, and uh, yeah, in the meantime, what what will be recorded is uh, me uh, having an amazing conversation with you, Javier. And like people are saying, like a headless rubber chicken, uh, trying to find the the solution that was pretty much in front of me, and I wasn't <laughs> noticing it. Uh, uh, it. It's really good to see. I think both me and Poe are really happy to see. Um, such an amazing point and click game being developed i i i <laughs> i almost can't believe that it's only you and paco uh, doing all this work and this is your first game it's well, um it's an amazing adventure i'm i'm really looking forward to play play the entire thing we'll have the demo available for the the steam event that that starts tonight won't we yes exactly um i encourage uh, everyone who's seeing us to uh, give the demo a try, uh, and don't be pissed by the cliffhanger uh, because a lot, a lot of streamers uh, of the of the game when we first released the demo uh, were quite annoyed by the way it ends because it uh, it ends in a big cliffhanger. Uh, but uh, we wanted to show that uh, that choice point. Uh, uh, which divides the divides the, the game into into different branches. I have to agree with uh, with Bernard in our chat. The best suggestion is to wish list the season of the Warlock on Steam to mm -hmm. play the demo as much as possible, and it it will be easy for you to understand how amazing the game is. I have one last question. My time is running out, but it's my last session. Sorry, production team, but you know I talk a lot. <laughs> so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna hang hang to this session until I I, I have to go. Uh, <laughs> you 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 invested in um, fully voicing the the game, didn't you? Yes, uh, yes, and we we have a great uh, main actor. He's uh, doing a great job, uh, Cathy Donnelly, and we've got that great uh, cast of actors too, and we're. Quite happy with the with the results. It's a, a really expressive uh, acting in most of the characters. Uh, and since you are Spanish, are you also investing in uh, fully uh, voicing in Spanish and or just uh, subtitles? Hopefully, I mean uh, we're exploring that avenue. Uh, we're not sure yet uh, because it's uh, I mean a full voiceover. Is something quite expensive to make, but uh, yeah, uh, the game is originally written in Spanish, uh, so it could be natural, uh, and that that it would also be uh, dubbed in in Spanish. Hopefully, uh, we can find the, the means to do that, yeah. and 
definitely we're exploring it, but we're not sure about that yet. But even uh, the actual translation of a, a game as a, a text intense, as a, um, a point and click game, it's also expensive. Even if you don't dub it, just the actual translation, it's it's all also a really expensive um, uh, job, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And uh, for that regard, uh, we we count on the help of our friends from the the Warlocks, which is a, a freelance translator group. I'm part of. That's why I I did the translation for Tax I Detected. Um, and uh, it's still uh, a quite an expensive endeavor, especially if you. Uh, translate to the many languages we we have the demo on. I think it's uh, in, in ten or eleven languages. I can't remember currently now, but uh, I noticed uh, Portuguese there. <laughs> yeah, the Brazilian person. I'm I'm sorry about that because we don't have the means to do both uh, Brazilian and Portugal Portuguese versions. But my next game will have Spanish with an Argentinian flag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. It's understandable because yeah, Portugal only has 11 million uh, Portuguese speaking, and then Brazil is 240 million. They 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 put the language in on the map <laughs> to, to yeah. say the least. Well, it happens the same thing with uh, with the Spanish. There's much more uh, Spanish with English. territories than than Spain. Yeah, and in English for sure. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh... Javier. What an amazing conversation. I, 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 I can't thank you enough for submitting Season of the Warlock. Um, I know I, I have a soft side for point and click games and I try to help amazing games the, the best possible way. And Season of the Warlock indeed is a great game, not only for the theme, for paying homage to Vincent Price and the classical horror movies and directors, even to our friend um, Poe. Uh, so I, I wish you the best uh, of luck to Season of the Warlock. We're here to cover the game when uh, when it gets released. And, well, thank you. And the best of luck, really. It was an amazing conversation. Thank, thanks a lot to, to you, to Indiex, and to the, the, to the great chance you're uh, uh, having us in this, in this great, great event. And uh, hopefully uh, there's a a new in person uh next year next year in the x uh, and i uh, actually will be in a spanish event next week uh and i will i will pass one or two days in madrid actually but uh yeah i need to go because the the director is already <laughs> telling me go go away Perfect. javier thanks a lot <laughs> thanks on a lot. my side and on post side it was the last uh streaming session uh, uh we still have four more and don't forget, today is the award ceremony um, live in studio. So you'll still watch me and see me uh, during that ceremony. Stay tuned because who knows who is going to win the several prizes and awards we have. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, that was with, with me and the rest of the streamers uh, during this in the X 2022. See you later. Bye.